Well, Gary, one of our top stories today, gruesome work in the woods of Brockton. Two sets of human remains discovered there. Now police want to know exactly how they got there and who they belong to, whose bodies those are. Investigators have been combing through the woods in Brockton, fearing the worst could still be ahead. One set of human remains was unearthed on Sunday, and then again, another human skeleton found on Monday. But this time, it was a dismembered woman found in several pieces. Authorities believe she was in her 20s when she was killed. Plymouth District Attorney Timothy Cruz says they're looking into any possible scenarios, including the grim chance that there could be more bodies in the woods there. Now, this is right at the end of a VFW hall, and they're looking at some surveillance video footage from that area to see if they can find any further clues. In other news, jury selection in the trial of accused marathon bomber Johar Zernayev is supposed to begin next week. And yet, even still, his lawyers are pushing hard to postpone the trial. They want to delay it even further. Now, the judge has already pushed back the deadline for the filing of some of those important pre-trial documents, but only for a few days. In a court filing, the defense contends that both sides would actually benefit from a continuance. They say trying to put Zernayev on trial any less than two years since his crimes that were alleged gives them far less time to prepare the major than the majority of other federal cases. They dispute the government's contention that they've been unwilling to stipulate to certain actions by Zernayev in order to move the trial along. Now, the defense says the government has not provided a single proposed stipulation and the defense also contends that the government has not produced any kind of documents or evidence, including the computer hard drive that belonged to Ibrahim Todeshev, the friend of Tamerlan Zernayev, who was shot dead by an FBI agent during questioning about the murder of three men from Waltham. Well, there could be some ATMs coming to casinos after all. The proposed amendment to the state's rules banning those bank machines in casinos is now on the table in Beacon Hill. Currently, those ATMs are banned on the premises of any gambling facility. Some lawmakers are quietly working behind the scenes to loosen the rules to ban ATMs from a casino's gaming area only. Now, supporters say they're simply trying to level the playing field between state and federally chartered banks, but opponents have long seen ATMs in casinos as enabling gambling addiction. Now, the bill sits before the House, which did not address it on Monday, and the clock's ticking on this one, too. It has to happen quickly. Any action must occur, uh, occur before the new session on January 7. In other news, the Vermont Yankee nuclear plant goes dark after 43 years of energy production. The facility officially ceased operations Monday afternoon, and the rest of New England went on just fine without it. Other power plants picked up where Vermont Yankee left off, and now it will fade off into the sunset. Sort of, anyway. The 600-megawatt nuclear plant will remain open in some capacity, and they say it likely will not be dismantled for a few more decades still. Now, the staff had been gradually turning down the power for a few months leading up to this, and they were actually down to 74% capacity on Monday before finally pulling the plug and transferring that responsibility of energy to other plants. Vermont Yankee had federal licensing to stay open for another 18 years, but expensive operating costs forced the plant to shut down prematurely. The Vermont Yankee workforce has already been cut in half, with another round of layoffs expected next month. And before long, residents living in Bay State nursing homes could soon be opening up another event on their social calendar, Happy Hour. Right now, it's illegal for senior living facilities to serve liquor and beer, but soon that could change. State lawmakers have sent Governor Deval Patrick a bill that would allow Grandma and Grandpa to go ahead, open up the bottle and imbibe on occasion. The governor has until January 7 to act on this legislation. If he doesn't, lawmakers will have to refile the bill and then send it to the state's new governor, Charlie Baker, later on this in January. 